Welcome to another Craft First Principles lesson with the Dancing Goats. Today we're going to learn how to ply a single ply into a two ply yarn with a heavy French spindle and a floor supported spindle, bottom whorl spindles, the floor supported spindles are great for plying. It's a simple, simple method and we're going to use a ball of hand spun single ply and make a two ply yarn. The simplest way to make a plied yarn when starting out and learning is to use a, an Ostapine or a center pull ball winder to take your hand spun off of the, uh, the spindle that you made it on, whether it's a drop spindle or a French spindle or a Russian spindle or a Tibetan spindle. Um, and that center pull ball, the, the real purpose in, uh, in spinning, in hand spinning for those balls is the fact that there's a uh, there's part of the yarn that comes from the outside and part of the yarn that comes from the inside. So I've wowsed these together here at the start. I've got uh, this is uh, this is some festival hand spun, and at festival I'll just grab just about anything I can get my mitts on whenever I'm demonstrating spinning. So there's a lot of different colors in here. There's blues and oranges and whites and greens and purples. And uh, after I get this plied, the I, I, that's really not the final step for me. We I like to dye these. Uh, after it's yarn, uh, stick it in a dye vat and see what the colors come out with some kind of a contrast and it makes some pretty neat looking yarn. So the uh, the first step is to put the ends together from the center pull ball on the inside and the outside and I've got one of my compromised French spindles here with a with a hook and since this since this yarn was made with an S twist at Festival which is a from the top it's a clockwise twist. I'm going to ply with a counterclockwise twist. So I'm putting some weight on this spindle. The spindle's got some is is a weighty spindle, weightier than you would use for for basic spinning. And I'm going to give it a counterclockwise twist. And as I go, the ball will unwind and I'll get started making my yarn. And we'll check the balance on the yarn. Uh, that's pretty nice. It's got a little bit of a twist to it, which is what we want, but not not a lot. And I'm going to tie this onto the spindle with a nice little clove hitch. And I've got a clove hitch lesson in the first principles that uh, teaches how to make this hitch. It's a real nice hitch. Uh, a lark's head also works, which is essentially the same thing. And I'm going to tie this on here counterclockwise, wind it on counterclockwise as I go. And when I get done, the whole ball will be a two ply yarn with an S and Z twist. So I'm going to put a couple of twists on the hook. And the thing about plying with with a with a support spindle. And a center pull ball is that it's really fast and it's really easy to keep the eyes on the balance of the yarn. So I'm going to wrap on. This is a uh, this is going to make a lot of striped yarn, but uh, in weaving or, or knitting, the stripes will turn into a nice tweed. A couple of wraps. And you'll notice that I lean that spindle over a little bit, and the spindle leans over, and that helps set the twist on that yarn. Just a little bit of twist on there.
Here are two Hanksy yarn that have uh, come from our festivals, the festival hand spun that was plied and then over dyed. And uh, this was over dyed with, uh, with a Cushing dye and uh, has a couple of nice colors of blue in it. Uh, this is also a Cushing dye that used, uh, used uh, some of their turkey red and I think this was the uh, I think this was a navy blue and uh, it uh, dyed a lot of yarn and uh, I used this in my tapestries for uh, tweed for the starts and stops for the top and bottom and it's a good example of a uh, plied festival hand spun. So I've got about half of the about half of the center pool ball is plied. As the spindle loads up with yarn it gets heavier and I found that uh, I kind of like that uh, heavier spindle and uh, the uh, as the yarn adds up it adds a uh, it adds a stability to the spindle as it spins it helps set the twist and helps make that uh, helps make the plied yarn better I think A lightweight spindle may be good for starting the spinning process, but I found that I think that the heavier spindles are much better for plying, and that's why I make them. Um, the uh, the French spindles, in particular, the large French spindles, are, are great for plying the heavier yarns that I make uh, as a, as an art yarn. And what I like to use mine for is for for I use it for binding my baskets. So uh, it really can't be too heavy because the uh, the yarn needs to be pretty sturdy. And there's not much difference between this and rope making. If uh, it's just a matter of the materials and the and the twists and the number number of plies. So the French spindle works real good. The heavy French spindles work real good for plying the heavier heavier yarns and some of the. Uh, some of the fibers, some of the fiber animals that have the real, real heavy twists. I've got a lot of customers that like the heavy, heavy spindles for the, the, the wool that has the extra twist to it. Um, it helps, helps in the spinning and the plying process. So again, cranking that spindle counterclockwise. I'm unrolling the center pull ball as I go. Sometimes with real slick fiber, the yarn likes to walk back down the spindle while it spins. And the way to cure that is just to put some extra wraps on the hook. If you've got a spindle that has a notch or a, or a spiral cut in the top like the old French spindles do, uh, just a lark's head across the top of that or a half hitch. I'll do the same thing that this hook will do with uh, with some extra wraps. That'll stop that stop that twist from traveling back down that spindle and doing that. Loosening the loosening the yarn up. It doesn't harm anything. It slows the spindle down a little bit. And the neat thing is we get close to the end. So we get close to the end of the center pull ball. It can be a bit of a problem to keep the remains of the ball from knotting. But usually not if you're careful and don't let it get too tight. And we're just about to get to the real reason that we use a center pull ball. The last thing I want to do with Festival Handspun that I've worked hard to make is lose any of it. 
And if you use two balls of single ply to make yarn, it's pretty hard to get them to turn out where there's not some waste and to lose some of it. But if you make your yarn from a center pull ball and go all the way to the end, like I'm just about to do here, got it. Get all the way to the end, and all of the yarn that we worked so hard to make at Festival is plied into yarn with no waste. And that's ready to put back on the Nostopy, or to put it on a Swift and turn it into a skein, which uh, the skeins, this is exactly how this was dyed. This was dipped in the dye bath as a skein. And there's a clove hitch tied on with one end, and then a clove hitch tied with the other end. And it goes in the skein and comes out, hangs up. And I use a, a multi-step process to get the dye to set. And um, then I like to I like to wash the yarn after it's been after it's dried just to make sure that it's not going to lose the color set good and that it's not going to bleed all over everything and with that that's a uh, that's a review of plying with the bottom whirl or the heavy French spindle uh, from a center pull ball The blue blue layer on my Navajo loom is uh, is a striped, over dyed, hand festival hand spun, and this hank of two ply will be the the uh, the top lead in away from the tapestry. This was the bottom, and this is the same. This yarn looks exactly the same with a little bit lighter color, but that's, that's what this will turn into.